Amina and Makbol on this day. This is a very, very special day. Now, Dedan Kimathi Washiori was the senior most military and spiritual leader during the Mau Mau uprising and widely regarded as a revolutionary leader. He led an armed military struggle against the British colonial regime in Kenya in the 1950s until his capture in 1957. Now, in 1956, um, uh, the, uh, the execution took, uh, took place the following year, leading to the decline of the uprising against the British colonial government. Now, before his execution, he wrote that he was so busy and so happy preparing for heaven tomorrow. 62 years on, we celebrate this man who put his life, his family, and his everything in line so that Kenyans can be liberated. We find out more about who he is and the individuals who've taken it upon themselves to tell this story not only about the struggle but about the man himself and what drove him to actually sacrifice his all for this land that we call home with us in studio good morning how are you doing wangeshi uh, yeah. gari there you go <laughs> i'm being christian but... oh. it's okay it's okay <laughs> wangeshi, wangeshi uh, first of all just uh, good morning and, and welcome morning. to the show thank you what what's your connection to this particular story. Let's start from there. Okay, um, to put it simply, uh, Deden Kimathi is my aunt's uncle. <laughs> mm? Yeah, he's my aunt's uncle. Okay. And in our culture, I'd simply refer to him as Buka. Right, yeah. so he's your grandfather. Yeah, yeah, grand uncle. Yeah, so Buka, Buka wow. Kimathi. Yeah. Um, so Kimathi, my hero. Yes. Um, when I was in Standard Day 6 <laughs> in Milimani Primary School, big shout out, um, we ha I got my first ever book fair happened. So, you know, the, they had all these different books that you could buy. There were the Nancy Drews, the Hardy Boys, the Mills and Boons, mm -hmm. the Sweet Valley Highs, ETC, the Archie Comics. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, the book that drew this 12 year old girl was a simple book by Sam Kahega, and it, the title is Dadan Kimaki, The Real Story. Now, I had very limited um, uh, pocket money at the time, and I didn't even know this guy was related to me by the way. Mm. I just, his blood called to mine, <laughs> and I, I, I wanted to buy a gift for my dad when I went for the book fair, so I bought him the book I wanted to read. <laughs> and um, in this book, you know, Sam Kahega dedicates it to the young generation, the sons and daughters of independence, and I dedicated the book to my father. But as I read through it, there's some, there was something about his story, his way of being that I just identified with, you know. There's a way even, it, it's, it's something I, I know every family can recognize, where certain things are passed down in, through the generations. And I'm a revolutionary, like he is. And um, in fact, my, my being here is kind of part of me reaching out and doing something to continue the legacy, mm -hmm. you know. Recognize my heritage and continue the legacy, but then also being a creative, um, I recognize that we are the custodians of culture, and you know we are the ones cultivating what our society becomes. And he was very key about addressing the needs that uh, were present in his day and age. He didn't start out wanting to be a field marshal. This guy, mm -hmm. he started out dealing with his shamba. <laughs> Mm. That's how he started father. out. You know, he, he started out dealing with the fact that uh -huh. his dad and a couple of his, um, you know, dad's age mates went to fight a war in 19, you know, the, the First World mm -hmm. War and never returned. They went to fight a war for a nation that had all these soldiers conscripted. Didn't bother to give anyone any report about what happened to these guys. Then your dad goes and he just disappears and you don't know what's happened. Yeah, no, no records, no, 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 records, no nothing. They don't even care about okay. you. And the, the generation of soldiers who came back from that war was so traumatized. In fact, they used to beat on drums. They had a song. When the, the trauma would just be too much, they'd beat on the drums and, um, you know, be, be crying. Or they'd be like, why, you know, it's like, cry with me drum. Cry with me, drum. Help me release my my emotions. It was therapeutic for them. Yeah, it was the therapeutic time. for them. I have it somewhere here. I'll probably find it at some point. Mm. But that was where he was coming from. And in one of the letters, I'm going to read today. What I want to do is just simply tell you about himself in his own words. Yes. Let him speak. So I'll read from his diary. I'll read from his uh, letters. And I want to just say thank you to Maina Kenyati because. 
he compiled uh, this information in a book called Dead and Kimaki Speaks. And anyone can access it, man. We need to know our history. We need to know about our heroes. Yes. Yeah. And celebrate them. And celebrate them. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, now, so this is a letter he wrote to his brother, uh, Kanol Wabariria, in uh, May 24th, 1954. He says, many greetings. We should meet before May 30th, 1954. Please inform Major Thea, Captain Barago, and Lieutenant Gatero about this. I have talked to Commander Derito Wadoita, Nyaga, Abdullah and a few other comrades and they have agreed that we should get together to review our situation. Mwangi has also told me that there is a group within the movement which is plotting to kill you, Donjera, Derito, Wadoita and myself. In a situation as serious as this, we should unite all our forces and prepare for a bloody confrontation with these liquidationist elements. Has your illness been cured? I gave Captain Barago 30 shillings and a pair of shoes to bring to you. Did you receive them? I also gave Captain Barago 30 shillings for himself. I received a letter from Kanyaga the other day. He told me that your men went to Karunaini and took a woman by force and brought her to the forest. Order these comrades to return that woman to her home. Our rules are clear. It is a serious crime to force individuals to join the guerrilla army without their consent. I am planning to go to Chania and I would like you to join me there. Tell Lieutenant Gatero to inform the four guerrilla women from Kanjora to be present when we arrive there. On their arrival, they should go to the house of Joyce, the wife of Gekonyo Maheda, he will, who will direct them to Lea Wambwe Wamutunga's house. Under no circumstances should they fail to come. I want to assign them a very important, important task. Marshal D. Kemaki. Mm. Even the I'm 30 just, shillings that he's talking about, yeah. that was a lot of money back then. Because you know what the Mau Mau would do is there was a subscription service and the idea was to amass uh, the resources of the people so that if, you're, if you died, they took care of your orphans and your widows. There was a fund, there were records kept. In fact, um, the, the British, it's actually recorded in all these books and I'll give you exactly where you can get this information. Because people are asking actually online mm. where you yeah. can get that information. Um, a government circular was sent out in the late 1950s to the Central Provincial Administration that directed that any Mau Mau records should be shred. Because they, they you know, we had storehouses. This isn't even a letter here where, uh, same to Colonel Wamogonda, May 24th, 1954, Kimathi writes, I do not have flour, sugar, or maize. However, so long as Wamanga is leading her group, their work should continue on even at night. These are the ladies who are ferrying goods into the, the forest, mm -hmm. the bullets. Mm -hmm. They used to call them charcoal, uh, food for the fighters. Mm -hmm. She is the only woman you can rely on in that area. Wanjoki has given orders that the books and letters in, and, in your possession and the ones in Ehoruru should be hidden because the enemy is planning as such in the area. It is better to die than to surrender. This struggle was led by young men and women as well, yes. yeah. who have not been, you know, celebrated. Yes. yes. And let me tell you something that was so amazing about this guy, and you, you, you're actually going to hear it in his own words. He cared about his people, and he knew each and every single one of them. He wasn't just leading a faceless army like the one that took his father away and never returned him, and didn't even tell his family what happened. Mm. He was dealing with the people directly, from that kind of 18-year-old guy to the women. To the, 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 he's asking, are you well? Is your stomach okay, my brother? Mm -hmm. He's talking about, there's a letter where he actually says, I need trousers, because the trousers I had, I gave to another gorilla fighter who needed them more than I did. Wow. That was so, Kimathi for you. And the spirit wow. of actually standing up and saying, no, we're not going to abduct women to force them to come into yes. this particular camp. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because, you, you know, the, there was this idea that um, the, the whole thing ceremonies were being done under duress. No, people actually went into the forest because they recognized the cause. Yes. Yeah. And in the next hour, we'll get to talk a lot more about that. And, of course, the participation of women mm -hmm. and as well as Shosho Mukami, who's tuned in right now listening, um, uh, the wife of Dedan Kimathi. Mm -hmm. Angalia Sha. Koflani Mau Mau. And Mokeshi, you were part of the production of this song. Um, yeah, no, not the music, but the, the music video. Uh -huh. uh, it was a thing we were doing with Kwani Trust and I was working with them.
Yeah. And I got to meet this fabulous guy, Zuko Plani Mama, man. Big shout out to you guys wherever you are nowadays. And my locks have grown. Zimawafikia. <laughs> Zimawafikia. <laughs> Amina is spotting locks today. I am. I am. Yeah. How long have you had your dreads? Ten. Ten years. Ten years? Yeah. Oh, I've had mine for yeah. ten hours. And <laughs> actually, you know when, yeah. when uh, Kimathi was hanged, they shaved off his locks, the white guys, and they distributed them amongst themselves as a keepsake. So when I started growing my locks, it was like a commitment. And I said, they're not being cut off until I do something for Kenya, like my Buka did, you know. Oh, wow. Until we are, my people are free in my generation from the problems we are facing now. So it's been kind of like 10 years of a journey. Wow. And it's, it's symbolic for me. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That is the voice of <laughs> Wangeshi Ngare. She's a granddaughter of uh, the field marshal. Through the cousins. <laughs> Through the cousins. Oh, we have to say that. Yes, Through the cousins. Yes. Of uh, the late.